What are you even doing there? Dude, I'm foam rolling my low back. Is that good for you? <laughs> yeah, it's actually really good. Why would you even do that? All right. We're gonna set this straight once and for all. It is okay to foam roll your low back. It's a matter of why you're foam rolling your low back. So let's talk about that. This is Craig from the Prehab Guys. I have a Rosh here hanging out. He's gonna help out and ask questions that we typically get as well as comments on our content in regards to what is actually going on with foam rolling. So what does foam rolling actually do? This is a really good question. I think we're still figuring it out. There's been a good amount of research on foam rolling, and we know that it can help improve mobility, so actually improving range of motion. We know it can help with perceived stiffness. It can also help with soreness and pain, but likely what it isn't doing is stretching out fascia. It's not breaking anything up. Uh, it's just a way to help people move better and feel better. So how often should someone foam roll? Well, I think at the end of the day, you shouldn't spend an hour a day foam rolling. There are likely better things that you can do with your time. But really, it comes down to why do you like foam rolling and what does it help you, what does it help you out with? So if foam rolling before your workouts, spending a couple minutes on your thighs helps you get deeper into your squat or rolling out your calves helps you get deeper in, into your squat, great, do it. Uh, maybe you like foam rolling your low back after deadlifting because your back feels sore, your back feels stiff, and it helps you go about your day. Awesome. But I think the more important question to ask yourself is why are you foam rolling all the time? And maybe is there something that you could be doing to get a better long-term fix? Can you show us how to foam roll an area like the low back? Yeah. So let's finally put this one to bed so many questions and so many content, uh, so many comments about why you shouldn't foam roll your low back, or maybe you're gonna hurt your low back. So I foam roll my low back all the time. And really this came up because I did some deadlifting, the right side of my low back was sore. I talked about it on Instagram Live and someone was like, why would you ever do that? You're gonna hurt yourself. Well, I do it all the time and I haven't hurt myself. So let's demonstrate it. So if you've never foam rolled before, maybe this isn't the first thing that you do. I'm gonna show you what you should just practice with first to get used to a foam roller. And that's just general rolling. So this is more than anything, just a massage, right? Get your feet set up flat on the ground. Be mindful of your pelvic positioning. Just keep it in neutral. Use your abs to keep it there. You can support your head and neck if you want. And then just practice foam rolling from the top of your shoulder blades to the middle of your back. Once you get good and comfortable with this and this doesn't hurt your back, then let's go on to the low back area. So I'm gonna get the foam roller set up right where my belt would be. And I'm mindful of my pelvis position. I don't wanna to be too arched as that may not feel great. Also, I don't wanna to be too rounded. I'm also gonna, I'm also gonna have my arms supported on the ground. I'm gonna have my shoulder blades supported on the ground. Now I'll get my hands behind me. And this is just general rolling of that low back area. I'm gonna let my low back arch and curve a little bit as long as it feels okay. And then what I may do is now rock side to side. So let my knees fall out as well as fall back in the other direction. And I'm just working some of these paraspinals as well as the QL, a lot of the muscles that are on the side of the spine. If it bothers me, okay, maybe I just flatten my low back a little bit more. Or if it feels okay, I can just do these gentle arching over the foam roller and it feels pretty darn good. And then if I really want, if I wanna focus more on a side, I can even lean over a little bit and I'm really using my arms and my legs to help support me and focus on hitting just one side of the muscles on my back versus I could go this way. And you can see this angle as well. So those are three different ways that you can foam roll that low back area without causing an injury, without causing pain, and likely your back's gonna feel pretty darn good after it. I would say spend a couple minutes at most, so like two or three minutes. You can do this after your workouts, you can do this before your workouts. Honestly, whatever feels best for you and what helps you feel more confident with exercising, what makes you feel better after your workouts, whatever helps you to stay moving, and in less pain throughout the day. Awesome, now that you have foam rolled, what would you do after you do some foam rolling to the low back? 
This is honestly the most important question. So if you find yourself foam rolling your low back or foam rolling a certain area all the time, seven days a week, and you're still constantly saying, oh, I feel super stiff, I feel super tight, I still have pain in that area, foam rolling isn't working, foam rolling isn't helping, maybe you need to ask yourself, what is it that you're doing with your exercising or with your activity that's causing this underlying issue? So if we're focused on foam rolling the low back, what do we want to do after to even promote more mobility in that area? And then more importantly, we just promoted all this new mobility and movement. Now let's stabilize and work those new ranges. So I'm going to show Arash. I'm actually going to, Arash is going to show it. I'm going to take Arash through three exercises to help move this area. And then we're going to do a few exercises to help stabilize this area. So let's start with the child's pose. So Arash is going to get set up on his hands and knees. And then what he's gonna do is he's gonna rock back. I want you to rock all the way back. I want you to reach as far as you can with your arms. And now let's focus on stretching one side. So if I really wanna stretch this side of his low back, Arash, walk your hands to the left as far as you can. As you do that, take a nice deep breath in through your nose and then breathe out and let your hips sink this area. What do you feel with that? stretch on my right side yeah you may even feel a stretch in the glute that's okay too because we know the back is going to be affected by what connects to it above as well as what connects to it above uh, below so now let's do the other side walk your hands back and then walk towards the other side deep breath in through the nose and then and let everything sink that way so that's a great stretch if you want to just focus on everything in the middle you don't even have to walk your hands you can just keep everything in the middle all right, let's come back up to our hands and knees. And now let's do some cat cows. So cat cows, great general global spine mobility exercise. You drop down to what you can control and what you feel comfortable with, and then you raise up to what you feel comfortable with. If this is bothering Arash's back, I would just say, hey, just keep it to a range of motion that you feel comfortable with. Now, I really like this variation where now come down on your forearms, Arash. And now you can even focus more mobility to this area, focus more movement on the low back. So still doing the cat cows, but now just doing it on the forearms. And then also you can be really mindful of the hip position. So if this didn't feel great for Arash, maybe I would say, hey, bring your hips a little bit more forward so that it's stacked over your knees or even further up and see how that feels compared to the other way. And Rosh, how does it feel different to you? Um, I can get more motion here. Yeah, versus if you come all the way back, it's just we're running out of motion, especially with tilting this way, because he's already in more hip flexion. So those are three great variations of low back mobility exercises that I really like. Now let's go into stability. So when it comes to stability in this area, we're going to focus on three different motions. So anti-extension, that is where we're resisting arching our back, anti-flexion, where we're resisting flexing and rounding our back, and then side bending. We're gonna focus on those three that are easy body weight exercises that you can do. So the first one is, let's just do a bird dog. So a bird dog, it's a little bit of both. We're resisting our low back rounding and bending, as well as we're resisting our back arching. So as the Rosh kicks straight, he's gotta use his glute to really just focus on kicking that leg straight without arching his back. And then as he, bring the, as he brings his leg in, it's now trying to resist his back rounding. So this is one of the top three exercises, I would say, in terms of just working on stability in this area. Now let's go into a plank. Nice transition. Oh, you like that? <laughs> <laughs> so now a plank, right? The more common thing that we see with a plank is the hips dropping down and the back going into extension. So Arash has to stay strong above and below his back, through his shoulder blades, through his legs to hold this position. This is a really good one. You can just do a couple sets of 10, 20 second holds before any of your big lifts just to get this area moving. Last but not least, let's do a nice little transition into a side plank. Nice. So we talked about this anti-lateral flexion or this side bending. So Raj, if you were to be completely relaxed, you would just let your hips drop to the ground. Relatively, his upper body is now tilting this way to the right. So he has to use all the muscles on the left side 
to come back up and to resist that movement. Again, I really like this because you can just do a couple sets right before your workouts or do this after. If this is too hard, you can put one foot in front of the other. That's gonna make it a little bit easier on this bottom left hip. Last but not least, you can go into a modified side plank on your knees. And this is gonna really work that glute. So we're just decreasing the lever arm on the leg. Get those hips nice and high and forward, and then you can relax. All right, so the big takeaways. Foam rolling your low back is not gonna hurt your low back. Be wary of everything that you hear on the internet and on social media because foam rolling is helpful with some things, but it doesn't do everything that some people make it out to be. Secondly, if all you're doing with your time is foam rolling or foam rolling is taking up 50% of your workout, you're likely doing too much time, uh, doing too much on the foam roller. So critically think and ask yourself, is there something else that I could be doing to help get this area moving better and making that mobility stick? And I think we just reviewed some stuff for the low back where, hey, here's some good mobility exercises for this area. Last but not least, here's some stability to work on feeling comfortable with making these ranges stick. That's all for today. Hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, my name's Craig from the Prehab Guys. Give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, let us know what you like and what you didn't like. More importantly, give us some more ideas for some other topics. Thanks, Arash. See you guys next time.